Hello, I'm Atubo George. Now, this is getting interesting. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I give you praise today. Thank you for your great power. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that have guided us into this month of September. And today we have gotten to the end of it. Thank you, precious Lord, for all the blessings. Every protection, Lord, that you protected us from all evil. We say thank you. Thank you for your great love that was demonstrated to us by you giving us your word. We want to say thank you. It's been a blessing, Lord, receiving your truth, getting enlightened, getting educated in the things of the Spirit. For this, we say thank you. And we will continue to love you, Lord, by keeping your word. Even as you have, teach, you have taught us, we will keep it. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. You have loved us, and we love you too. Amen. Praise God. Oh, praise, praise, praise God. The month of September is ending today. You know what that means? Tonight. We are having our 24 hours. We are beginning our 24 hours fasting and prayer meetings. Praise God. I don't want you to miss it. Set your alarm for 12. Now, if you're not in Nigeria or if you're not in the West African zone or, or uh, the same time zone with us, you set your alarm. Find out. Find out. You know our time. And that's West African time. Find out. Set your alarm so you'll join us. And if you've not gotten the link yet, send us a message. We'll send you the Zoom link that we're going to be having our prayer meeting on. Praise God. It's going to be exciting. I'm already excited about it. Praise Because you know what? God is about to do something in our nation. And when we speak, he hears and answers. Praise God. So I'll see you tonight. Praise God. Now, we, we, we're talking about Job. And, and listen, if you have not listened to Monday and Tuesday, you need to go search it. And then if, if you're not... Um, if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, do so. Because, see, let me tell you the truth. Those on YouTube get the message first. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, they get the message first. Because if you set an alarm, if you, set the, if you subscribe, and then you set the notification button on, and then once the message hits YouTube, you get it. Praise God. All right, so... We are talking about Job. So I told you yesterday that Job was qualified for this real blessing of God, which is true riches. And God wanted to deliver it into his hands. But Job would not allow God. How? Just like the rich young ruler walked away sad. Why did he walk away sad? He considered what Jesus just told him. Give out everything I have. Come on now. And Job taught the same thing. Give out everything I have. See. Now, now there, there's a story, or there's a there's a yeah, there's a story. I, I don't personally know how true this is, but if it is true, wonderful. There's a story that this same man was the one the Bible called in the New Testament church. They called him Joseph. The man who, who they saw named Barnabas. So he sold his property and gave. And then, you know, so, so they, they were trying to say that he later, you know, understood what God wanted him to do. And then he fell in line. And so if that's true, that's wonderful. Now, I, I read that somewhere. I can't really remember where exactly. But like I said, I don't, I don't know because the Lord have not told me this is, this is it. So until he does that. But if it is wonderful praise God so Job when Job couldn't obey God yet he was qualified for it I said this blessing God gives it to the people who have worked perfectly with him what does it mean to work perfectly with God it means to obey him everything he tells you to do so Job got to this point see that's the same thing with Jesus before Jesus entered into his glory he had to obey God even till death. That's how it works. That's what I told you yesterday. There is a, the, the wall or the separating line 
between the blessing of the work of your hands and true riches is death. It doesn't mean you you have to phys- it doesn't mean you have to physically die. It means you have to die to those things. So Jesus had to die to this world. He had to die to life itself. Remember what Jesus said. God didn't force him. He said, this thing have I received of my father. He gave me the power to lay down my life. And he gave me the power to take it up again. The faith that Jesus exhibited in God when he died on the cross was not in the obedience to die. It was in the faith that he will die, but he will not lose his life. That is powerful faith, man. That's the same thing Abraham did when he offered Isaac to God. There are certain things you will do that will make God respect you. There are certain things you will do that will make God say, wow, yes. Abraham was like that. God actually said to Abraham, wow. Now, why? Not because Abraham was ready to offer Isaac up. You need to understand. Now, you see, these are things you don't see if you don't, if, if you don't have the Holy Spirit to guide you. You will not never see these things. What surprised or what impressed God was not that Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac, but there was something that made him willing to sacrifice Isaac. And what was that? Faith. What faith now? Listen, when God told Abraham, offer this your son, Abraham looked at God and looked at the whole situation. Abraham knew that God had told him, in Isaac shall your seed be, and God cannot lie. Oh, Maliki. Listen, as I said, the, the, the anointing is just going all over me right now. I just feel like heaven right now. Why? This is the attitude. Now we're talking about Job, but somehow we've jumped into Abraham's story. You see, that's how it works. We're learning, bringing out lessons now. We're not done with Job yet. Abraham considered everything God had said to him. Everything God has said to him concerning Isaac, concerning the blessing. And Abraham remembered that he had Ishmael. And God had said to him, Send away Ishmael. He's not the one that will inherit the blessing. Isaac shall, in Isaac shall your seed be named. Okay. Now the same God comes and says, Abraham, give me your son, your only son, and offer him upon one of the mountains. Why would God tell me to kill my son when he has already said, in, in my son Isaac. Is it that I'm going to give back to another, Sarah going to give back to another son again and we'll call him Isaac? I tried with Ishmael. He said, no, it's, Ishmael is not the one. So it's Sarah that will give back to that son. And then he said, Isaac, in, in Isaac shall your seed be. Okay? So why would he tell me to kill him now? Is he changing his plans? Have I done anything wrong for him to change his plans? No, because he's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. He has spoken to me and he's faithful enough to keep it. So but why would he tell me to kill him? So what happens when I kill him? Hey, the God who is sending me to offer my son as a sacrifice, he is able to raise the dead. I see it now. I see it. I see it. So I think this is what it is. If I kill my son, Isaac, in obeying God, he will raise him up from the dead. Praise God. Yes! That's it. That's it. So I'm not going to lose my son after all. Let me tell you the truth. See, when people obey God and they have testimonies, it's not the act, the physical act that God blesses. It's what was in their hearts that God sees when they carried out that physical act that God responds to. So that's why you see people, you see, I, someone say, I sold my only car, and the next hour, I got a call, and things have changed. And that person say, ah, I sold my only car, it's two years now, I've not seen anything. It's not the sowing of the car that God is looking at. It is what did you hear? 
What did you see? So Abraham said, I'm not going to lose Isaac. Why won't you look at Isaac? Why won't you lose him? God have said in Isaac shall my seed be. But he's telling you, when you kill him, won't he die? Yes, God has the ability to raise him up. And I think that's what's about to happen. So I'm about to see a child being raised from the dead. <laughs> that's why Abraham didn't bother telling his wife Sarah about what he was going to do. You know, he didn't mention it to her. And secondly, you remember when Abraham was walking with the servants, they got to the foot of the mountain. What did Abraham say to the servant? He said, you guys stay here. Myself and the lad will go up and offer the sacrifice and we will come back. Why did he say we will come back? He didn't say um, um, I will come back. He said we will come back. He was speaking faith. Why? Because this, uh, this is a thought that I've consumed his heart. I'm not losing my son, but I'm going to obey God. Now that was the trust God was looking for in Job. The one who have blessed the work of my hands. Now telling me to give away everything that I have. Is he about to make me broke? No. That's the time you look at every word he has spoken to you. And you say, I don't think that have I done anything wrong. Even if I've done something wrong, why would he just want to take everything away from me? You know, that's how a lot of people think. But God expected Job to reason. That's where the now that's what God was looking for in Job. But he couldn't find it. Job honored God. He feared God. He eschewed evil. But he got to that crossroad. He couldn't die. Because he, he couldn't. I don't know, maybe he had not seen the testimony yet. He couldn't picture God raising the dead. You understand what I'm talking about? So if you die to your finances, he couldn't picture God raising him to life again. But he was still a perfect man. And God looked at him and said, you know what? Satan, come here. I need to carry out an assignment because I want to show Job something. I know why God did it so that Job himself will become a testimony for you. So when he gives you the same command, you will look at Job and he said, I know what God is about to do and I'm going to obey him and then I'm going to receive a real blessing, which is what? True riches. You don't have to buy the car that you drive. You don't have to build the house that you live in. Or you don't even have to buy it. You can receive it. So you see, Job, God said, Satan, come. I'm sending you to Job. Job said, oh, this is the challenge. I'm removing the challenge. You can have it. But live his life. Don't touch his person. See, that's the first thing God said. Don't touch his person. And Satan cleared everything that Job had. Cleared his children. His children died. Now that's another lesson. Why did the children of Job die? Because when the Spirit of God was teaching me this, I had to bring all this to him. I said, Lord, okay, if God was testing Job, what about his children? And then that's when the Lord said something shocking to me. Now I've never heard any preacher say this, so I don't think I got it from reading a book. Or, no, this is what the Lord told me. He said, listen, there are times in our lives, depending on our walk with God, that God gives Satan the right to come into our lives. Oh, he did it to Jesus. He did it to Peter. What did Jesus say? Satan came and he finds nothing. in So Satan came. Jesus spoke about his hour. You have your time. So do, do whatever you want. But I know something. I will lose anything and the Lord said to me when that time comes the challenge with that time is this because because you can prevent Satan dealing with you most times Satan is invited when we get to that point of working faithfully with God but just the last step just the last step the last acts of righteousness you, you don't want to do it but you see, you qualify for it already. So God knows what to do. He sends the devil to help you complete it. 
Now, what, what does he do? Now, the devil is going to hit you. Now, God will use, when the devil hits you, you cry out to him. Now, in response to mercy, see, that's what it means. He now shows you mercy. I pray you understand this. If you don't understand it, now just keep it somewhere. And say, Holy Spirit, teach me this one. And that's what happened to Job. Our time is up. How come our time finishes so quick this days? <laughs> Praise God. I will see you tonight. Maybe we're going to continue. I don't even know. Because it's a time of prayer, not really a time of teaching. So, so we're just going to pray. But, but see, while we're praying, the Spirit of God can even bring understanding to you concerning these things. Praise God. Or else, I'll see you tomorrow. Now, that, that also means I'll see you next month. So I'm not going to see you again this month. I'll see you next month. Praise God. Whoa. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you today. And we bless you for November, for September. Thank you. We're stepping into October with gratefulness in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.